Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the Bose Museum again. Um, last week, I was in this gallery, the 19th Century Picture Gallery, and I was talking about a number of paintings in the 19th Century Picture Gallery. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a few paintings in the 18th Century Picture Gallery. So follow me through, and we'll have a little chat about pictures in the 18th Century Gallery. What is remarkable about the Bose Museum is when it opened its doors to the public in 1892, it had the largest collection of Spanish paintings in Great Britain, uh, 76 in total at that time. That's increased over the 20th and 21st century. Um, the National Gallery, by comparison, had 20 pictures compared to the 76 at the Bose in 1892, and National Gallery of Scotland had two. So, Barnard Castle, a population of 5,500 people, probably less back in 1892, had the best collection of Spanish paintings in the whole country. Putting it into perspective, uh, at the time the Bose Museum opened, Josephine had died in 1874 and John had died in 1885, so none of them saw these paintings on the walls of the museum. When the Bose opened in 1892 with the biggest collection of Spanish pictures, 30 years earlier, um, John and Josephine, living in Paris, uh, were in discussion with the Countess de Quinto about her collection of Spanish paintings that she was looking to sell. Her husband had died and he had amassed a huge collection of Spanish pictures. And they were in negotiation with a Condessa over a number of months and three pictures they bought. Um, next week I'll talk about the um, El Greco, but today I'm going to talk to you about the Goyas. Um, these two pictures, their agent told them that he, they really, if they were going to build this museum in Barnard Castle, these pictures were really important to have on their walls. They didn't like them. They didn't want to have them. They didn't like Goya or El Greco. They were both in fashionable artists at the time. These two paintings by Goya, Spanish master of the 18th and early 19th century, are two of our masterpieces. Uh, I, as an art historian of the collections we have, these are in my top 10 of, of the best paintings. And the portrait of Melendez Valles, who, who was a lawyer and a poet and a friend of, of Goya's is just a beautifully intimate portrait. But what I want to focus on for a moment is this painting, this small painting, um, very small. Um, I want to put the painting into context. In 1792, Goya uh, became seriously ill. He was falling down the stairs. He couldn't hear properly and he was having dizzy spells and he became profoundly deaf. And he had been a court painter, uh, painting uh, pictures for the king, but he left Madrid and went down to Cadiz. And on his return, he painted a series of paintings this size. They're all the same size as this, a dozen paintings. And this picture is quite remarkable. Uh, the pictures on the walls that you can see around this are all on canvas. This is on tin plate. And for whatever reason, he chose to paint um, a series of paintings of bullfights, of um, uh, people being kidnapped, um, prison scenes, lunatic asylums. And this is a, 
a, a, a prison scene, and it is a, such a remarkable picture. It's, it's, it's tragic in what it's portraying, but it's also hugely poetic. This picture for me is very affecting. I've written about it over the years. Um, it's tragic. Um, all of the figures that you can see here, it's just an utter state of hopelessness. They're going nowhere. Um, they're gonna see no one. They're gonna die in tragic circumstances. And I think Goy has captured that. It's, it's upsetting, but very affecting. In contrast to the very tiny Goya prison scene, we also have in the collection these two wonderful, huge Canaletto paintings um, that were acquired not by John and Josephine, but were acquired in the late 20th century. Um, Canaletto, our image of Venice in the 21st century, is um, set by what Canaletto portrayed in the 1740s. These are two paintings from the 1740s, and the image of Venice we have today is, is one that he projected that has lasted for several centuries. In contrast to Goya's prison scene, uh, the, this pair of paintings, when they are a pair, uh, they're about celebration, and celebration in Venice um, in the early 18th century. And they are pe two paintings that our visitors come to see time and time again. Also in the 18th century picture gallery is the world famous Silver Swan. Um, again, putting it into context, it was made and produced around the time that Canaletto was painting his, his huge landscapes of Venice and the time that Goya was painting his um, prison scene and portrait of Melendez Valdez. And part of the workings of this amazing creation and it's the most important thing in the collection and is revered worldwide and it's a hugely rare thing um, you, you're seeing it in, in situ and it's it's not playing it plays normally once a day it's not played for being played for a, a, a few months now and uh, uh, I, and I miss it deeply but I also want to show you a painting in another gallery uh, of a portrait of the man who was partly responsible for creating it. This is a portrait of Joseph Merlin. He was a friend of Gainsborough, and Gainsborough painted this portrait of him in the 1770s. And Joseph Merlin was responsible for creating the workings within the Silver Swan. He was an inventor, and he, he and Gainsborough were part of a, a, a set circle in London in the, the late 18th century, um, a, a combination of artists, poets, writers, inventors. And what's interesting about him is he was the inventor of the roller skates. And uh, there's a very famous story 
that was reported in the, the press at the time, where at a party uh, in Grosvenor Square, he uh, arrived on his roller skates, playing a violin, uh, and crashed into a, a very large mirror and hurt himself very badly. Um, but he was a really important person at, at, in, in his age, and he is responsible for what we enjoy at the Bose Museum today. Thank you.